Okay, so what we're looking at here is a full stack social media scheduling app I created using Cursor and Claude and Convex. And I set myself a goal of being able to prompt my way through creating an entire full stack app. So this is um, what I ended up with. Uh, I, I have uh, an app that is uh, scaffolded and it connects to Instagram and it pulls in the posts for the, the pages that the user has access to and the uh, metrics for those posts as well. Um, I've also stubbed in a new composer, which is a new feature that I would like to add in the next video, which at this point, I think I can, I think I can prompt my way into new features pretty quickly. However, the first, um, era of this build was a little bit more, uh, sticky, I suppose, or, or challenging even than I had initially expected. So it was just a few days ago uh, that I had set myself a goal of being able to prompt my way through the entire process of creating a full stack app from an empty directory. And I wasn't able to actually do that. So Cursor's ability to run terminal commands and edit multiple files was really intriguing and it is really, really powerful. Um, so I figured I'd be able to use that new functionality to say, okay, cursor, or Claude, let's start creating this app. Can you scaffold a new um, Vite, Convex, React, TypeScript, Shadzien app based on what you know? And it was always able to do something, but it was never really able to use the, uh, the most idiomatic commands to achieve that stack. Uh, it kept installing, uh, you know, like uh, next using create, um, create next app instead of create convex. Uh, it would attempt to create, use like create react app uh, and then afterwards install shad cn um, and none of these things really uh, worked out of the box so i tried this four or five different ways with different prompts i add i ended up adding uh, all the documentation i i felt was necessary so all the convex stuff all the shad cn stuff all the Vite stuff into cursors document index. So I manually added those. I like gave it the URL. I said, let's use, please, for the love of God, use this information to do what I'm asking. Um, and that didn't really, uh, that didn't really work. So I said, at, at some point I said, okay, I, what I'll do is I'll scaffold the app. I'll just go to the convex quick start. I'll go through the process of setting up the app. I'll get Shad CN, uh, and like my baseline dependencies in there and we'll go from there. And that's what I did. So I went, I went through the quick starts. I was able to set up, um, a, you know, a bare bones app with all the dependencies that, uh, I needed just to get something up and running and styled using, uh, like tailwind and, and shad CN and, and all that. So I, I ended up doing that part, uh, myself. Um, uh, and, and now that's like, not really, a problem. Um, that's pretty much the most straightforward part of creating a full stack application. However, it did signal to me that maybe I wasn't going to be able to prompt my way through creating this entire application. Um, if I couldn't prompt my way through the very first step, but let me stop here. I, this has been a lot of sort of, maybe it sounds critical and I hope not because, um, my experience building this with cursor easily doubled my productivity. If not, if not more, 
Now, I think there's a few caveats that go along with that. Um, I think the most important one is that I have a lot of experience in the social media scheduling um, space, I suppose. So I, I already know how to build this system. And that was a huge advantage because um, at every step of the way, if cursor would make syntax errors or non-ideal um, decisions about things, I was able to course correct the entire time um, because I knew how to do this manually by hand if I, uh, if I really needed to. Um, and so that is kind of a, that's like a critical part of this experience was that I already knew how to do this. Now, what, what cursor did for me was type a hundred or a thousand times faster than I can. So if I wanted to scaffold out some dummy data, like you're looking at here, just to fill the, the UI before I actually connected to my Facebook data source, uh, it, it's able to do that in like seconds. And it's incredible. Um, if I want to add a new React component and a dialogue to go with that. Dialogues are built up of many components now, like dialogue, uh, he header, title, description, content, footer. It's just like there's a lot of boilerplate. And uh, uh, Cursor was unbelievable at making that super efficient. I was able to not quite operate and build at the speed of thought, but significantly closer to the speed of thought by prompting it. And then as I was building this, I got more in tune with the types of things that Cursor was able to do uh, very well and the things that it struggled with. And those things include, so starting with the things that Cursor struggled with was the bigger the task I gave it, the more errors it would produce. And there was something a little bit uncanny about that experience because it would create a number of files and it would make a number of changes. And then inevitably there's some, some build or application error, um, almost without fail. If it was a large, if it was a large request I put to, to Claude, um, and then I have to go troubleshoot that. And that was the uncanny, funny experience because now I'm going around my code base. I'm the only human who's touched it, but I don't recognize many of the files. I don't recognize a lot of the code. And now I have to go debug that. Um, so there was this kind of funny aspect of me having to go and learn what felt like a legacy code base, not that the code was uh, like old or necessarily like that bad. That's not, that's not really what I mean. What I mean is that it wasn't my code and I had to go learn it and understand it and then debug it. And I could use cursor and, and Claude to help me do that. Um, so that's a kind of a funny experience. I needed to understand how the system worked, even though I built it, although I didn't code some of it. So that was funny. Um, but on the flip side, learning how to use cursor effectively, holy moly, it is super, super powerful, um, period. So I got better and better at understanding, like I said, the, the types of prompts that would, um, be very effective and, and work really well. And they tended to be, um, smaller requests or, smaller specific requests. If I had a small-ish feature and I could explain how I wanted it to work and probably which files need to be reviewed and looked at, um, it was very good at that. And so I started to prompt cursor with uh, smaller focused prompts. And now that seems obvious, but when that's coupled with the ability to edit multiple files or to create files as required, 
that was a, a total unlock. That was a, a total game changer. Um, side note here, I spent way too much time struggling uh, with the Unsplash API. Now it's a, it's a great API. Um, I just, I, I was not, I just, I spent too much time kind of like spinning my wheels on it for some reason. So ultimately I ended up just going, um, just going to like Google images to get some dummy images I could use for, for the prototype. Anyway, I became better and better at prompting uh, cursor to do what I want, um, trying to get the most out of it, but the fewest errors. Ideally, every change or every prompt I would ask it to do, it would actually be able to, like the, the app would continue to run and compile. Now that actually doesn't happen 50% of the time, maybe a little bit more. Um, but like I said, it had easily doubled my productivity and my ability to create this full stack app. Um, there's, there's no way I would want to do this now without this type of assistance, without this, without this type of efficiency. Um, and like I said, so right now what we're watching is me setting up a new, uh, Facebook development app so that I can hit the graph API, people can log in, I can hit the graph API. Um, I've used the graph API for years and years, um, and it never ceases to confound me, uh, <laughs> honestly. So I would be more than happy to walk through what it takes to actually get a, a Facebook app up and working and have a user on the front end like authenticate and connect and have you be able to use their access token to hit the API. And I know it sounds straightforward, but I promise you, if you've worked with the Graph API in the past, it is extremely comprehensive um, and pretty well documented, but because it's so vast, there's a lot of trial and error. And anyway, I've been through that a million times and here I am, you know, doing it again. So I would be happy to walk through how we get this set up. Um, permissions are a huge, a huge part, uh, a huge thing to understand. And ultimately, this is where we ended up. You can connect your um, Facebook account. And what it's going to do is fetch your Facebook user. Then using convex actions takes the code that Facebook returns back to you. It exchanges that code for an access token. Then it asks for... Um, me, my account, my pages, my Instagram business pages, and then my Instagram posts, the, the actual media. And you can see it right here, saving those, storing those in the convex, uh, database. And what I'm showing in the client is very simple reactive queries. So I'm just sitting there in this react app saying, um, give me all the Instagram posts for this user. And as they are uh, inserted into the database, they appear in my client. And that's where we're at. I would love to do, um, I would love to build a lot more features right now. So like, let's do this together. If you have any specific features you want to see me um, create, let me know if there's anything you want me to review more in depth about what already exists, let me know. But I'm hoping to post at least one feature per day using cursor to prompt my way through until we have a uh, reasonably high functioning social media management SaaS product. So yeah, there's lots for us to do. Think about payments, Think about users, accounts, uh, think about scheduling, think about the composer, think about disconnecting, think about email notifications. There's a lot we could do. So like what sounds fun? Let me know.